Good morning. I'm so pleased to welcome students, faculty, staff, our Board of Trustee Chair, Chris Whitman. Great to have you here, Chris. Trustee Judy Von Bucher is here. Thank you, Judy. Members of the media, honored guests, and of course, the whole RIT community. I'm President Bill Destler, and I thank you for joining us here for an announcement that I promise will be well worth your time. This is a historic day for science. As you may have heard this morning, the International Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO, announced for the first time that it had detected actual gravitational waves, confirming theories put forth a century ago by Albert Einstein. And amazing, isn't it? Almost exactly 100 years. <laughs> so, this is an incredible science-altering news that opens up a myriad of possibilities for what we can learn about the universe. But what's also amazing and what makes me burst with pride today <clears throat> is that RIT and a group of researchers here have played a very important role in this discovery. RIT is incredibly proud of Dr. Manuela Campanella and her team at the Center for Computational Relativity and Gravitation at RIT, which is part of our College of Science. Their work and their dedication to their field exemplify the kind of internationally recognized research that increasingly is happening here at RIT. So let me bring up Dr. Campanelli, director of the center, who will introduce you to her team and give you the details of their role in this amazing discovery. Manuela. Thank you, President Dassler, for this wonderful introduction and kind words. This is a days of days. This is a day where every scientist should walk very proud of. We are very proud to be part of the Einstein legacy. We as CCRG want also to thank President Dassler, Provost Hafner, Vice President Ryan Raffaelli, RIT leadership team and its board of trustees as well as College of Science Dean Sofia Magalakis and our department head of the School of Mathematical Science, Mihai Barboso, for bringing us at RIT and for the support they have given to us for the center today to be successful in its research in the ever. We are very proud to be part of the LIGO scientific collaboration that announced this important discovery this morning. This announcement has a great significance for RIT. It has a great significance for the entire world. It is the first confirmation, direct confirmation of the existence of gravitational waves that Einstein predicted 100 years ago. It is the first confirmation of the existence of black holes, as well as the observation of binary black hole collisions that the RIT team contributed to. In other words, this is an historical moment in science. This is the discovery that will mark the opening of a new era for astronomy called gravitational wave astronomy, a new window into the universe has been opening today. Among the authors of this amazing discovery paper are six researchers in my team. The paper has just appeared in Physical Review Letters today, after the announcement at the National Science Foundation you heard this morning. I would like to introduce the team members and as well as the teams of the entire CCRG now. When I do so, please, I'll call your name, raise and face the audience so you can be recognized. Dr. John Whelan, <laughs> Associate Professor in the College of Science 
principal investigator of the LIGO scientific collaboration at Rochester Institute of Technology. Carla Losto, professor in the College of Science and founding member of the CCRG, a key, a key author of the 2005 breakthrough in numerical activity that played a role in the today discovery. Richard O'Shaughnessy, a since a professor in the College of Science, a member of the LIGO scientific collaboration, who will talk more on the importance of this discovery. And then, James Healy, a postdoctoral researcher working at the center who works with Dr. Lusto. Jacob Lange, a College of Science PhD student in National Physical Science and Technology who is working with Dr. O'Shaughnessy. Ye Wan Hao Zhang, a PhD student who worked with Dr. Roelan. And now the rest of the team. Dr. Hans-Peter Bischoff, Professor of Computer Science, Thomas Golisano, College of Computing and Information Science and a founding member of CCRG and one of the key members who produced the visuals that you are going to see today. Dr. Josef Zlachower, <laughs> Associate Professor in the College of Science and also a key author of the 2005 Breakthrough in American Relativity. Dr. Joshua Faber, Associate Professor in the College of Science who works in modeling neutron star coalescence, which is one of the sources that LIGO will detect in the future. Dr. Jason Nordhaus, Assistant Professor in Mathematics and Science at the National Technical Institute of DAF, who is working on core collapse supernova, also an important source for the LIGO detector. Then PhD student Dennis Bowen, College of Science PhD students in astrophysical science and technology who work closely with me on binary black holes. Jackson Henry, undergraduate student in physics in the College of Science who work with Dr. Wellen to study the detection of geometry of LIGO. Brennan Ireland, a College of Science PhD student who work also with me to, on binary black hole coalescence. Monica Rizzo, undergraduate student physics in physics in the College of Science who work with Dr. O'Shaughnessy. Jam Sadiq, a PhD student in the College of Science, a graduate Fulbright student working with Joseph Slochover also on binary black hole coalescence. And Zach Sibelman, PhD student who work uh, with Joshua Faber on binary neutron star coalescence. Please join me uh, in giving this incredible team a round of applause. And now I would like to show you a brief video that will tell you a little bit more about our work. In November of 1915, Albert Einstein presented his field equations of general relativity to the Prussian Academy of Science. This was a revolutionary idea in physics at the time that fundamentally changed our understanding of how the universe works. The idea that space and time are dynamical quantities that are influenced by the presence of matter was, was completely mind-blowing uh, and unique. It changed our understanding of gravity itself. Gravitational waves is among the most amazing prediction of the theory of Einstein general relativity. Gravitational waves are disturbances of the space-time produced by the collisions of astrophysical objects like binary black holes and neutron stars. General relativity is important for neutron star calculations. They're relativistic objects. Newtonian calculations don't capture the full physics of what's going on. Many of the elements we see in the universe were created by neutron star mergers, and it takes 
a sophisticated level of nuclear physics in order to make accurate predictions and really be able to test models. For a vacuum simulation, we typically use up to around a thousand computers for a single uh, simulation. If you start to add matter on top of that, then things get even more complicated. And rather than using a thousand, you'd be using tens to possibly even hundreds of thousands. The group here is one of the world leader groups in the field of microactivity. Ten years ago, we solved for the first time the equation of general activity that described how two black holes collide and merge in strong field gravity. It was called a breakthrough in numerical relativity. Finally, we obtain a, a way of solving this problem. Some of the revolutionary work that was done was to perform some of the first simulations of binary black holes. These simulations, for the first time, allowed us to predict what we actually expected. Nobody has really, until recently, seen a gravitational wave. So the lab generates templates, an idea how a gravitational wave could look like, so the scientists at LIGO have a much easier time to actually find them. We made predictions about what the gravitational waves from binary black holes look like. Detailed and accurate predictions. Einstein predicted uh, gravitational waves as a part of general relativity, and uh, he said they were most likely real, and that we would most likely never see them because they were too small. And he is partly right and partly wrong. Several members of the CCRG are members of the LIGO Scientific Collaboration, or LSC. Uh, the LSC is a thousand member collaboration, all collaborating uh, to analyze the information from this interferometric gravitational wave detector. LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, and it's this kilometer scale interferometer. So they look for changes in the geometry of space and time that would be caused by gravitational waves by looking at changes in distances. And it can make very, very fine measurements in not an absolute distance, but in the difference between two lengths. So it can tell if one of its arms is very slightly longer than the other. And it turns out that in order to see the kind of gravitational waves we expect there to be around, you need to make these distance measurements incredibly finely to uh, a, th a thousandth the size of a proton. Late last year, Advanced LIGO turned on and immediately detected gravitational waves of precisely the form that was predicted here at RIT by detailed simulations of Einstein's theory of relativity. The LIGO announcement is both a very historical and emotional moment in science, especially when our research contributed to the identification of the first gravitational wave from a binary black hole merger. I believe that what LIGO have detected is perhaps the most important result in the last uh, 50 years in physics. This opens up a new area in science, in astronomy, which is gravitational wave astronomy. We've now kicked off the era of gravitational wave astronomy. And so, you know, this is an important milestone to make the first direct detection of gravitational waves, but it's the beginning of the story, not the end of the story. Now we have a completely new window into the universe that will teach us many things that uh, we had no access to before. And now here, I would like to introduce my colleague, Dr. John Wellen, who is the principal investigator of the LIGO scientific collaboration, to tell us a little bit more about this amazing discovery. I should say I'm the principal investigator of RIT's group in the LSC. I'm not in charge of the whole LSC. Uh, when I first came to RIT in 2008, the CCRG already had a world-renowned numerical relativity group and was looking to build a group carrying out gravitational wave observ observations in the LIGO scientific collaboration. The LSC is an international collaboration of over 1,000 scientists at nearly 100 institutions on five continents. LSC members improve the LIGO detectors, analyze the data for gravitational wave signals, and uh, interpret the results. When I arrived, I was leading the internal review of all the searches for compact binaries and about to begin reviewing the first search for binary black hole in spiral merger and ring down with initial LIGO. 
Since then, our group has grown, and among the contributions we've made to the LSE is playing a major role in interpreting the first confirmed binary black hole signal. Today, the LSE and the Virgo collaboration uh, have announced the detect. Today, the LSE and the Virgo collaboration have announced the detection of this signal, received uh, at the two LIGO detectors in Louisiana and Washington State at the start of Advanced LIGO's first observing run last September. The primary paper has been published in Physical Review Letters, uh, volume 116, if anyone's taking notes. Um, uh, and there are 12 other papers that are being released today which have been submitted to various journals explaining the results of this discovery and its significance uh, in further detail. Gravitational wave scientists perform sophisticated match filtering of our data using accurate templates. This is to confirm the significance of our detections and to rule out false alarms. Fortunately, this signal as recorded in LIGO is actually so strong that we can just show you the data and point to the signal. There it is. <laughs> uh, and it looks just like the numerical simulations. To explain more about the analysis and RIT's involvement, I'd like to introduce Dr. Richard O'Shaughnessy, the other faculty member whose main research is on gravitational wave data analysis, uh, and then also Carlos Lusto, who has been working directly with the analysts to provide insights in the CCRG, uh, from the CCRG simulations. Well, I'm happy to say Einstein was right. Um, as John, uh, John said, what we're, we're showing here is what we saw uh, when we woke up on the morning of uh, September 14th uh, and checked our email. Um, and we were told, wow, <laughs> look at this. Um, because uh, what we're showing is what LIGO sees, our response. Now, it's more sensitive to some frequencies than others, just like your ear. So. Uh, this only shows up when it be, uh, becomes a particularly high frequency signal right before merger. But you see a couple of wiggles leaping out at you from the data. And this is the data. Below, from both instruments, and it looks exactly the same. So clearly we've seen something. Even more fascinating, and if you look closely, you will see that we have error bars. We can reconstruct the signal and compare it with the detailed predictions of Einstein's theory of gravity as produced by detailed supercomputer simulations. And they agree fantastically well. Most of you in the back probably can't even see the error bars because the signal is right on top of them. As I said, Einstein was right. Uh, so what we're, LIGO is reporting today is therefore three, uh, in my mind, fantastic discoveries. First, obviously, the direct detection of gravitational waves. Second, the observation of coalescing binary black holes. That agrees precisely with Einstein's theory of general relativity, allowing us to perform high precision tests of fundamental physics that had previously been completely inaccessible to us for the first time. And third, we discovered binary black holes, something which, because they're black, had been completely inaccessible to us. These objects we had expected to exist at the end of the lives and deaths of massive stars. And my colleagues, Dr. Jason Norshouse, uh, can tell you more about that. But never before, although we had expected them to exist, had we seen them at that mass ever, or let alone two of them together, so close together, and remember, in order for this to happen, they have to be well inside the size of the stars that formed them, spiraling together and coalescing. This tells us new things about the lives and deaths of massive stars. We now know because we saw this at the, almost the instant that advanced LIGO turns on, that these occur frequently throughout the universe. So frequently, in fact, that if you account for all of them that occur uh, 
out to the beginning of the universe, that we expect at least uh, one gravitational wave is passing through you from things like this every about 15 minutes. <clears throat> so this discovery shows directly, because we can reconstruct the properties of the source by comparing with these detailed simulations. And that is one of the essences of our contribution at RIT. We directly compare, we directly do these comparisons between the data and the results of these simulations. These comparisons allow us to measure specifically what we just saw, what was responsible for this wave, why we know it was a pair of black holes. This means that now we've transformed gravitational waves not just into a detection of a new realm of physics, but we've made it into an engine of astronomical discovery. <clears throat> now, of course, this is only possible and enabled entirely by our ability to correctly understand the predictions of Einstein's theory of gravity. This is the interaction of two black holes. Uh, and th the data analysis project that I described, which is central to our work in the LSE, involves the direct comparison between gravitational wave data and the predictions of Einstein's theory of gravity as performed on supercomputers, which uh, Dr. Lusto will describe momentarily. So what I'm going to speak about is how we generated these uh, waveforms uh, from uh, theoretical studies, essentially solving general relativity uh, equations. Um, and uh, I will uh, show this in a, an animation, a computer animation that we have prepared for uh, explaining uh, how we uh, do that. So uh, those are the waveforms generated by these two black holes here orbiting around each other. You see the fabric of the space-time uh, that uh, represents the, is represented by the grid of our simulations. The black holes are spinning. That's represented with the arrows. The orbital uh, plane persists as the black holes get together. We have the waveform in the bottom, and that's what uh, is going to reach us on Earth. The final explosion releases an enormous amount of radiation and outshines the whole universe by a factor 50 or so. The uh, release is equivalent to, in the last 0.2 seconds, convert twice the mass of the sun, annihilate it, and convert it into gravitational waves and send it all around the universe. So as was mentioned before, the significance of this discovery announced today is two leaps forwards in our understanding of nature. One, the existence of gravitational waves that Einstein predicted 100 years ago and describes the fast motion of these two bodies, motions comparable to the speed of light, and then the strong field uh, limit of general relativity, in fact, so strong that light cannot escape from them. I'm speaking about black holes. We have a direct detection of black holes. And we have been able to produce these simulations uh, only since 10 years ago. It was a 40 years standing problem. Now we could solve. Only 10 years ago, we have been able to solve this into uh, supercomputers. Let me tell that this simulation that we have seen here briefly for 30 seconds took six months running in our some supercomputer here in RIT. And it took only six seconds in nature to produce. <laughs> okay? That tells you how difficult are these problems to solve. And we are proud to be part of the family of RIT and, and contribute to the huge step forward that science have taken today. Thank you very much.
very special day, I think, for science in general, but also for RIT. And let me emphasize a couple of things that really our, our speakers are a little bit modest about their own contributions. I won't be modest because I'm so proud of them. Uh, first of all, uh, this work on uh, binary black holes, uh, postulating their existence and then predicting the kinds of gravitational waves that uh, would come out of them is, is the product of more than 10 years of work, starting with a seminal paper uh, co-authored by uh, Manuel Campanella and her colleagues, in which they discovered a very elegant way of solving Einstein's equations that permitted this kind of simulation to occur. Uh, that is really the foundational element that allowed these predictions to occur. And remember, these predictions have predated this present discovery by years. So in fact, the, the LIGO experiment, as wonderful as it, is, as it is, and it's a tremendous technological achievement, is actually a confirmation of the prediction of the work of these individuals that you see here. It's really something special. <laughs> You know, and finally, I'd say that uh, you know, RIT, of course, is a, is a place where research is a go increasingly important part of what we do, and we're proud of the work done by our researchers. But I think you also saw that we have both undergraduate and graduate students working on these problems. There aren't very many people who would involve undergraduate students in this kind of project. I think we should be very, very proud of that. Okay. I think that uh, the, probably the best way to handle questions would be to have uh, uh, perhaps the, uh, our speakers be available for questions from the media. We have uh, quite a few media representatives here. Uh, but this is a proud day for RIT, a proud day for science, clearly a proud day for the LIGO team. I don't want to understate the elegance of the experiment which they conducted in order to make these detections. But remember, it kind of started with these guys right here. Thanks very much.